Welcome to episode 30 of Deborah Quilts Lots and Knits Bits. I'm Deborah McCracken and I quilt a lot and I knit a little bit. Today is Thursday, February 9th, 2022. So happy birthday, Deb McIntosh. And happy birthday tomorrow to Bryn and Eden and Barb. It's a busy week in the birthday realm. So thank you for joining me. I come here occasionally to talk about things that I've been working on and uh, I usually wait until I've got something finished to show you. So I've got a few things finished. I'll start out with my knitting. So what am I wearing? This is the shawl I made from the K-Zip Knit Advent Calendar that I received for my birthday. And I just did, I call this kind of an improv shawl. I just knit what I felt like knitting. Uh, I came with a full skein of this eggnog and then um, 20 gram skeins of each of these colors. So there's five more colors. Anyway, so I just knit a little bit of whatever I felt like knitting. And when I ran out, I just continued on with the eggnog. And uh, I used up 99% of the yarn in my advent calendar. So, and I just picked up on things that I've knit on other shawls and just used the little um, techniques that I liked and thought would have a very, just a cool contrast and yeah, it's very exciting to get that done. So thank you, Kelsey of K-Zip Knits for putting together such a beautiful collection for your advent calendar and just while we're on Kelsey uh, she does a quarterly kind of mystery box so she posts a picture that the, that's the inspiration for the yarn that she's dyeing and I've gotten every one for the past couple of years until this time it was called over whaling because it was a whale tail in the picture and I thought, oh, I'm just overwhelmed with the yarn. I can't do that. But we were on Zoom knitting last weekend and I said, oh, somebody showed their yarn and I'm like, oh, I need that. So she said she did have an extra one. So I got it. So it's all these bluey grays and then the greeny grays. And so that will make a beautiful pair of socks. I'll probably do a shawl with it though. And it is 75% BFL and 25% nylon. It's called her Kettle Valley Fingering. And it's very soft and squishy. And so her mystery box comes with uh, little goodies. And so I got some whale themed stitch markers, which is awesome. So thank you, Kelsey. So, on to the next knitting. I don't know, I'm pretty sure I talked about my brioche project. Now, brioche was one of the things that I wanted to learn in 2021. And I um, follow Biscott Yarns on Facebook and they showed this shawl and it was a kit. So you got the pattern and two skeins of each color. And it was the Louise Roberts Pure DK. And it was a, it's merino, superwash merino and silk blend. And so there was this silver color and this green color. So I, I started working on the shawl and I was having trouble learning how to do brioche and um, the shawl that they had wasn't 
didn't have much movement in it. So I went on to Ravelry and I found this one called Brioche Wings. And it really had some nice definition to it and a little bit of movement. So changed over to that. I started it, I'm not gonna say any less than 50 times. And I finally finished my Brioche Wings shawl in January. And I'm so pleased with it and it blocked out like huge, 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 huge. And um, I needed to put stuff on, on, the, on the spot where it was blocking and it was a little tiny bit damp. So I threw it in the dryer for a few minutes and it kind of came back to just this nice shape. So I'm very pleased with that. And the brioche wasn't difficult to learn how, like it was just I'm getting the rhythm of it. And once I got that, I was in good shape. Uh, and the other thing that I really helped, there was a uh, brioche, Fixing Brioche Mistakes by Stephen West, I think. I'll put a link in the video box below. And that made a huge difference because I could read um, my knitting and see where I was running into trouble. And that was a, a big help. So yeah, you gotta find the things that work for you. When I started knitting, I promised myself I was only going to buy yarn for a specific project when I was ready to work on it. Well, sometimes the yarn says, you need to buy me and find a project to do with me. So I was at the bee's knees and I found this. And it's just so beautiful. It's Melabrigo Sock. And this is called Forta, Fortaleza. And I thought, oh, this would make a beautiful butterfly shawl with a nice contrast. Also, Malabrigo sock yarn, and this is called Polar Moon. So I thought these two be a nice contrast with each other and be a beautiful butterfly shawl. Now I have seen probably 17 other shawls that these would look beautiful in because they're gonna look beautiful in anything. So stay tuned. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with them yet. Totally against my rules, but I got it. I got two skeins of each, so I should be able to make a nice, a nice shawl. So, uh, as you may know, I quilt for other people. So people make their quilts and they send them to me, and I do the decorative stitching that keeps the three layers together, that adds texture to the quilt. And so, like, you can't even see on this quilt, the design in there, but. Uh, so uh, I met Sharon, I don't know how many years ago, quite a long time ago. Her and her husband came to stay at our motel in Castlegar. Um, their granddaughter lived close by, so they came and visited, and then they would come out every summer and uh, sometimes in the fall and visit too. And uh, Sharon is a quilter, and she and I became fast friends, and She's moved from Calgary to Ontario, back to Cal well to Cochrane, and back in Ontario now. And she's sent me quilts the whole time, doesn't matter where she is, and I really appreciate that. These are always beautiful, lovely quilts. And uh, this time she sent me some quilts and she sent me one of her market bags. She crochets these and she sells them on her, just on Facebook and um, when markets open up, she'll go to markets again. And uh, yeah, just so fun and thoughtful. Thank you very much. It's so great to get a homemade gift when you're a maker. So thank you, Sharon. And she also sent me these cute little cards. They say quilt friends stitch together. They're Amy Bradley cards. So. I so appreciate all the little goodies that she sends, and she sent me a quilt pattern too. 
along with her quilt to quilt. So I'm very fortunate to have the friends that I do. Uh, we started this uh, 25th guilt 25th gifters on Facebook and it's just a group so we're trying to keep each other accountable um, and work on you know, dedicate the 25th of the month which was Lisa's idea um, to working on things that we would use as gifts for Christmas the next year and um, it's been fun to see the ideas people are sharing the things that people are doing I didn't work on Christmas gifts. I did some little drawstring bags um, for Bryn and Eden's birthday. And uh, then I attached the drawstrings at the bottom of the bag so that they can be worn as a backpack. So they can put their dance shoes in them. I lined them with um, waterproof fabric. So if they go to swimming lessons or something like that, they could use them for that too. Or they could just put their dolls in them, whatever. They're pretty, they had uh, Disney princesses on them, of course, you know, whatever. So that was my January project. Uh, I still don't know what I'm gonna do for February, but it's coming up pretty soon. So uh, I will work on that pretty quick. So now onto quilting. Did you notice this quilt behind me? I finished it. And there's a little bit of a story behind this quilt. This quilt is called Hidden Wells and it's a technique originally developed by Mary, Auken, Mary Ellen Hopkins who uh, did the It's Okay to Sit on My Quilt series and um, basically when I found it I thought it was such a cool technique I made up a quilt and then uh, I didn't have a shop at the time and my friend who had a shop said, hey, why don't you teach that as a class? So I did. It was the very first quilt class that I taught and then I just loved making it because it was so effective but simple. So I thought, well, you know, I'm going to try this with five strips instead of the three that I'd been doing all along. and. Uh, so two of the strips I made the same and it's just a really cool technique and there's a ton, a ton, a ton of videos on YouTube. Um, Rob Appel did it, um, the three dudes quilted, did video, I don't know if they did a video but they put out a pattern and um, like it's so long ago I originally found it on a Yahoo group for long arm quilters. So there you go. So on, I would used to keep my UFOs in pizza boxes and you can buy like pizza boxes at the wholesale club, but you gotta buy like 25 or 50. And um, on the end of the pizza box, it said, finished by September 1st, 2009. So that tells me that probably the beginning of the year in 2009, we were asked to bring some UFOs to a quilt guild meeting, which is a trap. And Peggy Toes was our challenge coordinator at the time and her challenge was, okay, you finish your UFOs by the September meeting. So it must have been like January or February because sometimes there's a lot of time involved. So I wrote on the box, finished by September 1st, 2009. I put the box away. And in 2015, I pulled the box out and put the top together. So now it's like still UFO, but it's at a better place. So the other day or last week in my Facebook memories, it came up that I had put this top together in February of 2015. And there it is still in the closet, not quilted. So I promised myself that I would 
finish a quilt for myself every month this year. And I, yes, I did do one for January. It's hanging in the window at Poppins right now. So I got this out and I said, well, what am I going to do for a back? So I took two more UFOs out of the closet and made them into the back and I'll flip it around for you in a minute. Uh, and then, uh, well, you know, I'd like to put wool batting in it, but I don't have a piece big enough. But I had a lot of pieces that were like 20 inches by 108. And um, I, I keep all those and I don't, I don't know why. Well, I use them all in this quilt. I just overlap them a little bit and um, quilt away and hold them tight because it's all quilted together. So it's going to be it's a very lovely and um, poofy, poofy quilt right now. And I just, I'm so, 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 so pleased I got it finished. Um, it is 88 by 88, so it's huge and heavy. And um, so it's pinned up there at the top with like a pin every three inches, and that's holding it up right now. So I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to flip it around, and then I'm going to turn the video on again and um, show you what's on the other side. Not necessarily the back, but it is the other side. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, so UFO number two on the same quilt. This was called the Quilter's Friendship Mystery Quilt from Border Creek uh, Station. I think it was 2017 or 18. And I signed up for the mystery quilt through Timmy Jean Quilting Arts in Castlegar. And um, so a mystery quilt, if you are unfamiliar, is a um, quilt pattern that you, you get uh, the instructions in increments. So, you know, the very first thing that you get is a guide that tells you what kind of fabrics to pick like you know so much medium so much light and how much you need of each and um, you know if there should be contrast or, or what and uh, i picked out a few colors and timmy jean said well yeah okay you know i don't because she knows what it looks like to end up with but you don't so i had um extra another fabric all together and in there and I had cut the pieces out and then you get um, yeah you get the cutting instructions and then you get um, more instructions on putting the blocks together and then at the end you get instructions on how to put the blocks that you've made together into the quilt so this is not how the actual quilt should look. Let's just say that. It was still a mystery even after I got all of the instructions. I don't know how I did that. I had a whole extra fabric left over, like I had a really cool peach fabric that went in this. Um, I thought it was cool, but when I got the blocks put together, those pieces were still left over and I don't know where they were supposed to go. Honest to goodness, I read the instructions before I got started and I followed the, I made the little cheat sheet of all the fabrics that were fabric A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and I still don't know. So it does pay to pay attention. So I talked about this, I don't know, maybe a year ago when I actually put the top together. My, yeah, I think it was about a year ago. 
So anyway, I kind of put it together and made it fit together with the fabrics that I had left because I did run out of this diamondy, like it's, it looks like diamond print. And um, I had lots of this batik left and I had a little bit of, of this left. I've used it in other things. And um, yeah. So I put it together in a quilt that, that worked out just fine, even though it's not how it was supposed to look. Uh, and my initial plan was to do some quilting in here with a very contrasty thread so that uh, it would showcase it, but um, I didn't want it to sit in the closet for 15 years. So, ta-da, I put it on the back. So I'm just going to stop. I'm going to flip it over to the other end so that you can see the last UFO that is on the back or on this side of the quilt. So I'll be right back with you. So here is piece number three on this quilt that was unfinished in the closet for many years. Uh, this piece was just a beautiful piece of fabric and so it was a repeat of the um, pattern so you know what it is up there it would just start again here and and uh, and continue on so I cut that just across the width of the fabric so it's just beautiful fabric I loved it and then I cut that with the fabric into a few pieces I didn't cut through the center I just cut it at random on either side and I added in some pieces that were just an inch and a half cut and they finished it an inch and just to make it look like you were looking through a window or a screen or something out at the garden. That was what I was thinking anyway. You could do this with a panel. You could do that um, with anything, this piece of fabric. So my original intention was to quilt this to within an inch of its life and so I was going to go around every little frond on the chrysanthemums and put all the veins in the leaves and then the background was going to be quilted really densely with a fill and maybe um, a few more chrysanthemums and, and stuff and then put it on stretcher bars and put it on the wall. Well, that was 2009 or 2010 and it's 2022. And as it turned out, this piece was exactly the right size to fit in with, fit onto this piece to make it big enough to go on the back of that Hidden Wells quilt. So it's found a new home and it looks lovely. And I think when, if I lay it on the bed with this, uh, this side up, this will just be a beautiful along the pillows. And I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. I did add some coordinating, well, not coordinating, but you know, matchy enough um, fabric to the sides of this. And then there's a little bit down the edges um, just to make it big enough for the Hidden Wells quilt. And um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with the way it turned out. So three objects on my ta-da list for this month. So pretty excited about that. Anyway, I am now, I have some commission quilts to make and I have so many quilts to quilt. Beautiful quilts. And I want to say thank you to all my quilters who bring me things to work on. I know that when I get up in the morning, I'm going to be able to come downstairs and see something beautiful and work on it. And the next day, I'll probably see something else beautiful and work on it. And it keeps me going and I still love to do it after all this time. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So I guess that's really all I need to tell you this week. Um, I'll be back when I finish something else and that could be a little while now. So 
happy quilting, happy knitting, happy making whatever makes you happy and enjoy the sunshine and the spring weather that's coming and we'll see you very soon.